In today's lesson, you are going to learn about perspective and cross hatching. So first, all you need is a biro. And first thing you're gonna do is create some lines, not going back and forth, just one way and see how close you can get to them together. This will create your dark shade. Then you don't have to press quite as hard and do the lines further apart. That's your lighter shade. Now, can you do it darker and then go lighter? Can you get it so it's fading? So you want close together to make it darker and then you pull them apart to make it appear lighter. What you don't want to do is just go back and forth like a scribble. What you do want to do is you do individual lines, which are nice and sharp. Pause the video and have a go yourself at how many different shades you can do. Do light, do dark, and then can you do dark to light? Okay, so the next thing you are going to do now is actually build on the cross hatching. So again, try and do your dark shade as lines as close together as possible, and then perpendicular, do the lines going the other way. Again, as close together as possible. This makes it an even darker shade. You're not colouring in, you're doing cross hatching. Once you've done that, now do the opposite like we did before. So what you want to try and do is do it where the lines are slightly further apart and again perpendicular, over the top, far apart. Here we've got three different shades. Pause the video again and have a go this time at doing the cross hatching. So you're doing lines perpendicular to each other. Can you get at least three different shades? Remember, the closer together they are, the darker it will appear. The further apart, the lighter it will appear. So now we're going to take it to another step and do a bit of experimenting. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the lines at a slightly different angle to each other. They're not exactly perpendicular. Again, I'm trying to do it slightly lighter, but again at different angles. And then this one, I'm going to try and do my darkest shade. I'm doing the lines one way, then I'm doing them another, and then I do them a third way. This not only creates the shade, but also a texture. Here I'm just trying to do the same effect, but doing it lighter. And now I'm bringing in curves because things aren't always flat. So what happens if I do curves with straight lines over? It almost makes it look like a cylinder. And what do I do if I do curves in two different directions? These are just a few examples, but I'd like you to have an experiment and see what different effects you can create. Again, pause the video and have a go yourself now. Experiment. Try doing it with the lines going at slightly different angles. Is it different if some are close together and the one you put on top is further apart? What effect do you get with curved lines? Some are curved with straight on top, or maybe both are curved. Could you start thinking about how to make things look 3D with this? Drawing you're going to create next. We're going to do a box as if it is taller than us. So it is right in front of us, we can't see underneath, we can't see on top because it is taller than us. So let's see how to do it. First, you need to grab a, a ruler and with a pencil, you're gonna draw that horizon line. We're actually gonna deal with two um, vanishing points this time. So first I draw my first corner and then I do my two vanishing points. I join my vanishing points to the top of that first corner and I join them to the bottom of the corner. Then I need to draw the two ends, and I'm grabbing a pen to do this this time, and I'm cutting off those lines and drawing the two ends of the cube. And I'm drawing in that middle line and the lines that join it. So now I'm just drawing over the guidelines. And there, we've drawn a 3D box. Or a box. 
So now we're going to use that cross hatching to make it look more realistic. So I'm going to do this side, the darkest side, which means my lines will be close together. I'm just writing where the sun is so you can understand where the light's coming from. So this is the other side, so it's going to be nice and dark. So the lines are going to be close together and I'm going to cross hatch over it as well to make it as dark as possible. Now my other side isn't going to be pure white because it's not actually facing the sun. So I'm going to do some more cross hatching, but I want it to be lighter. So I'm not pressing the pen as hard and my lines are slightly further apart. I still wanted to cross hatch over it. So I really have to be careful not to let it get too dark. Now, if the sun's shining, because you know your science, we would have a shadow. So first of all, this wasn't overly successful for me. I tried to draw sort of some guidelines as to where I thought the shadow would fall. Um, but in the end, based on where the sun is, I just decided to go with my gut as to where I thought it would naturally fall. It was taking a lot of measuring. And I didn't want to do this as dark as my wall, which was the darkest. There's a bit of a shadow. Now it's your turn to have a go at drawing the box. So this is the next one you're gonna draw. Now this box is floating, which means it is gonna be above us, which means we can see underneath, which means we need to draw it above the horizon line. But it's the same technique. So ruler, draw the horizon line and draw in your two vanishing points. I'm drawing my middle bit here, but it must be above the horizon line. It can't touch the horizon line. Vanishing points are in and I've done my top and bottom. So now I'm gonna join my bottom and my top to each vanishing point. And just like before, I'm gonna draw in the edges of the box, the far edges. And now I'm gonna take the bottom of those and join them up to the vanishing point. So this one is going to the far opposite one. And then I'm going to take the other one and it's going to go to the far opposite one, which means they will cross over. And there you've got the base of the box. I'm drawing in all the lines I need now in pen. Be really careful of drawing only the lines I need. And it looks a bit odd because it looks like it's going to a point, but actually that's how perspective works. And so once again, I'm going to have the sun coming in from the same direction. You can change it if you want to. Just for ease, I was doing the same direction. So I know which sides are going to be darker and lighter. So once again, I'm doing the darker side. So the lines need to be close together. Now, I know that underneath is going to be even darker. That's not getting any of the sunlight at all. So I'm not doing my darkest on this one. This is my middle tone. Now I'm doing the other side, which is a bit nearer to the sun, so it's gonna be a lighter shade. So I'm not pressing as hard with the pen and the lines are slightly further apart. Still cross hatching though. Making sure there's a clear difference between both sides, otherwise they blend together. Now underneath, I know from my testing that the three directions is going to be my darkest. So that is what I'm gonna do here. So now I'm doing my second layer. And then in a different direction, I'm doing my third. Now, because the box is floating, I'm gonna need a shadow, but it won't be touching the shadow because it's not touching the horizon, so it's not touching the ground. So to make it look like float, it's floating, the shadow can't touch the box and will be below, below the horizon. Now it's your turn to have a go at drawing the box, but looking at it from below and the box above you. Now you're going to have a go at drawing a box which is below you, which means you are taller than the box and you can see above it, you can see the top. This means that it will be drawn below the horizon line, as you can see on this one. So, we are again going to draw our horizon line. I need space underneath because I'm going to be drawing it underneath. And again, I draw my middle line.
and I'm drawing in my van two vanishing points either on either side. Join up the bottom to the vanishing points and then join up the top to the vanishing points. Draw in my edges. And again, take the edge and join it to the opposite one and join it to the edge and join it to the opposite one. Now we can see the top. I'm gonna to draw in all the edges. So only when something is lower than you can you see on top of it. So when we draw buildings, we can't often see the top of them. So we don't draw the top of them. So again, I'm gonna have my sun in the same place which means the top is going to be the brightest, so I'm not going to put any shading in there. But this side is still the darkest, so again, lines are close together. I'm pressing slightly harder, and I will cross hatch. I will do the other side, again lighter, so slightly further apart and I'm pressing lighter. And then just like with the first one, we're gonna do a shadow in the same sort of way. Again, I'm kind of going with my gut with what looks natural here. Make sure it's lighter the further away it is because the shadow is fading out. Now have a go at drawing the box where you're looking down on it. All those techniques to draw almost like a building block tower. So you can choose what size your blocks are going to be. Mine, I'm doing it a bit almost like the uh, pyramids. So when we do it, it's gonna start slightly below the horizon, but essentially, because it's gonna be big, I want it to be way above. So my first block, I'm gonna have it slightly below the horizon and slightly above. I join the top and the bottom to the vanishing points. So it's basically a wider version of the one we did first. I can't see the top and I can't see the bottom. I'm gonna draw off the edges. I'm making it quite long this time. And I draw it in with the pen. Now I'm gonna draw the next one. So to make the loop slightly offset, that middle line, I'm making it slightly off from where it was before. So it's not quite in line with the other one. And again, using the same vanishing points, I'm joining it up. Don't need to do the bottom because it is already on a bottom line. It's kind of hidden by the bottom block. Just need to draw in the edges. And I'm having them cut in slightly because I want the blocks to be smaller than the one it's above. So they're not quite reaching to the same length as the one below. And then I'm going to repeat that. So again, that middle line is going to be slightly off, going in the same direction. Matching up with the vanishing line. Again, don't need to do the bottom because it's hidden by the block below. Just going to do the edges slightly in from the one below. And I'm going to continue doing that. Then use the effect of the cross hatching to get the shade in. Keep watching, enjoy, and then have a go at your own.
and your final task, have a go at drawing the layers of boxes to make a pyramid. <laughs>